Look at who we have got! Isn't this it's amazing? Me. It's Tony so Ollie. It's the wonderful Oliver Ormson. Hello, fellow Leggers. Thank you for joining us once again for a theatre trip. We have headed up north to Manchester. We are. We are. You went really northern there. Went, we've headed up north. We've headed up north to the Manchester, <laughs> Manchester. Opera. I can't opera even opera say. House. Manchester Opera House. Let's spit it out, love. Um, so we are going to see. <laughs> Well, we're going to go and see a musical which is brand new and based on a film which is considered to be a worldwide cultural phenomenon. Which is... Back to the Future. The musical! Hey, so stick around to find out all of our thoughts. Find out how many stars. Whether it's break a leg or, or leg it. it. Stop. Up here in Manchester. Stop. Okay. Alexa, what's your favourite movie? I mean, even the internet knows, right? Because Alexa is literally the internet. Um, if for Alexa's those of you who don't musical, have Alexa, what happened right there? Yeah. Le well, Back to the Future was mentioned, right? Okay. Because it's considered to be perfect. It's iconic, and as it's, I mean, I love. It's my favourite movie. Okay. And do you know when a movie is going to be turned into a stage musical or a stage show? We start to worry. The stakes are really worry. high. And yeah. I am, I, you know what? I'm optimistic is what okay. I am. It's a brand new musical premiering here in Manchester. Now it's based on the 1985 movie of the same name, which was actually the first part in a trilogy. The film was directed by Robert Zemeckis and starred Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd and is now considered to be one of the most perfect movies ever made. It's a great film. It's a great trilogy. I mean, it to is. To be fair. It, upon its release, it grossed almost $400 million worldwide and has gone on to have even further success with, do you know what, cartoon spin-off, video games, and now a stage um, musical. A musical. Okay. And this musical adaptation has been many, many years in the making. It was originally slated to make its premiere in London back in 2015 to okay. celebrate the 30th anniversary of the movie. Which now, would have been great. It would have been. I but mean, it's talk been about delayed. Time, yeah, now talk about a sort of. It's had a bit of a, a staggered approach to a the stage. A bit of a rocky approach. Up until that point, A-list director Jamie Lloyd was attached to direct the show, but he left the project in 2016, citing creative differences. Read what you will into that it below. Sounds if there's a story there. It does. Mm, yeah. I don't know but if we, we're privy to that information. Following his departure, the production was pushed back and further issues ensued, meaning the show didn't premiere until 2020, February, right here in Manchester, where we are now. Right now, right here. Now, okay. for those of you who don't know the story, where the hell have you been? It's one of the greatest <laughs> movies ever made. Um, it, follows the fa um, it follows teenager Marty McFly, who's accidentally sent back to 1955 by zany scientist Doc Brown, where he meets his future parents and causes a potential paradox that could erase Marty from time itself. Dun, dun, dun. Stakes are high, guys. Okay. Director John Rando is now leading this, um, leading us back to good old 1955, and his other credits include Broadway productions of On the Town, The Wedding Singer, and he picked up a Tony Award for Best Direction of a Musical for the Broadway version of You're in Town in 2002. Okay, so good potential there. Now, in the film itself, if you know, there are several songs featured, including The Power of Love, Huey Lewis and the News, Earth Angel and Johnny Be Good, which have been retained for the stage show, but there's been additional numbers added by the original film composer, Alan Silvestri. No way, what a legend. I know, in a, okay. a, alongside... Um, lyricist Glenn Ballard. Glenn Ballard is best known in theatrical circles as co-writer for the music and lyrics for Ghost, the musical. Okay. Now a great cast has been assembled for this fellow. It goes on and on. What more information can you give Including us? Including like Broadway legend Roger Bart. Now Roger Bart is playing Dr. Emmett Brown here, but he's also a Tony Award winner who boasts such credits as Snoopy in You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Okay. for which he won his, uh, his Tony Award. He's the original Carmen Ghia in the cast of The Producers. Great. And he originated the role of Dr. Frederick Frankenstein in Mel Brooks's Young Frankenstein. Now, geeky fact here, he's also the singing voice of Young Hercules in the 1997 Disney film, Hercules. Really? So you know, 
I will there you go, go Legos. I will go the I distance. Go That's, That's him. him. Okay. It's him playing well, Marty ever. McFly in this. Is the gorgeous Ollie Dobson. And Cedric Neal, who we last saw with a smooth, silky voice in The View Upstairs, is playing Mayor Goldie Wilson. In the ensemble is our lovely friend, fellow legger, Oliver Ormson. Who uh, we've had a chat with earlier and we've had, had a bit of a quiz with, so stick around to the very end of yeah. this review to watch that. And find out what his journey was with the show, because he's been with the show for several years now. It's, it's been, been a, a bit long of time coming, yeah, it really absolutely. has. Run time, shall we say, about 2 hours 45 at the moment, but it's still in, in previews. previews. We're on about preview number 11, I think. Yeah, so that potentially might change, but stick around for a 30 second interval breakdown. And as usual, fellow leggers, to the end to hear all of our thoughts and find out how many stars. We've come into the interval, which means it's time for the breaker leggers. 30, 30 second, second interval, interval breakdown. breakdown. So what, what do you, do you think, start think with you? so far? I'm enjoying it. It's really notes itself. I think it's quite hard to, to make a musical of something that's quite serious and they've tackled it by making it quite fun. It's taken the mickey out of itself. It's moving quite fast. I'm loving the effect so far. Uh, how about you? Um, I mean, I, I feel like I would love the show if it wasn't for the abysmal behaviour of the audience. Unfortunately, there's no regulation here. Also, the mix is really bad, so I'm not hearing some of the vocals. The visual effects are stunning, and I like the fact that it is a bit campy. But we Fellow Leggers, we have come to the end of Back to the Future here at the Manchester. Opera House, it's very windy. It is and you know cold. What? Yeah, I mean it's typical northern February weather for us here, you know, blustery, blowy, but were we blown away by this movie to stage musical based on my favourite film of all time? Well I think as it's your favourite film of all time, you should go first. Okay. So what did you think? I enjoyed it. By and large, I had a good time. It's so difficult when you're dealing with source material that has a place in your heart already and you sort of have expectations or you think that certain things should be certain ways. Um, yes, I, I enjoyed it. I, I don't really know what more. You know, did it add anything to the movie? Did the score add anything? No. Were the most memorable songs the ones from the film? Absolutely yes. Um, and as a result, it was fine. It was fine. I thought it was quite fun. Um, what I felt was sometimes you go and see a show and in the audience is like, come on, entertain me. Come on, show me what you've done to turn this into a musical to be entertained. But actually the audience were on board and it was almost a bit meta in a way. It was, they almost, it was quite panto-esque. They were sending it up. They were making it funny. We knew exactly what was going to happen. And yet some of those key moments uh, in the narrative, once the kind of the heroes finally got their hero cape on and confronted the villain sort of thing, got rounds of applause, brought the house down, everyone was on board. So I think for a whole piece, it was really fun and everybody was there to have a good time and it was really easy to get swept up with that. And the book does stay true to the source material, like all of the characters are there, those iconic lines and catchphrases that you expect and are the in extra there. Cheeky if tweaks you're going here in there for as well. that, you're gonna get that those moments. Absolutely yep. so. And what else happened? Are you saying the audience was saying I'm here to have a good time? I think it's because it's a Saturday night in Manchester and they ain't just had one drink, guys. Well, I think we need to say when you're coming to see Back to the Future, is it you're not in Kansas anymore? Is that the yeah. same? You ain't I in theatre land anymore. We weren't at the Almeida anymore. Correct. There's something about the Almeida Theatre, we always mention this, come 7.30, curtain up, everyone is silent. Even before curtain up, it comes to 7.30, everyone goes silent, silent. And in anticipation. Everyone's on their best of, behaviour. Yeah. I think people coming to see Back to the Future, it's a commercial show, it's yeah. going to attract a commercial fans, audience. Fans of the film. And unfortunately, there was really poor theatre etiquette, yeah, a, so bear that in mind, a, a fellow leggers. Do you know what? If you can't beat them, join them. Get off your f trolley and then come and see this because um, most of the other people are, especially on a Saturday night. I, I was frustrated, distracted, and I would say I can only really review 80% of this show because the other 20% was just complete and utter lack of respect for other people by the audience. I think you've got a certain amount of it I've got to put down to the ushers as well. There are blatant phones out and recording of many segments of the show. Yeah. 
didn't see one usher. No, didn't see didn't, one thing. Couldn't care anyway, less at the Manchester. But that was our theatre experience yeah. here, so I guess we comment briefly on it. Yep. Um, so let's also talk about the music. They have yep. complete ownership and rights to the complete soundtrack. The score. So the score, even the little incidental moments yes, that the underplay the key little lines, little. The, it's all in there. And it's like, uh, yes, uh, we're here uh, and it's live. Yep. And it's, it's, it and really that drives is, the oh, narrative. That is the biggest thrill for me, hearing that that superb, sumptuous, one of the most iconic and best theatre scores of all time, played live by a full band, is undoubtedly an absolute thrill. It's not a question, it is an absolute joy. Um, and there's obviously a lot of special effects in the film. You've got this car that is travelling through time. Yeah. Um, and how do you create that on stage? And they come up with some really nice, inventive and fluid ways to represent that. Yes. Still in previews, I think there's still probably some tightening up here and there, but I think the actual ideas and making it a theatrical event they absolutely made it a theatrical event even though I mean the Opera House is huge and I imagine the stage is huge they've got all of the hydraulics and the slidey all mod cons my darlings it's, it's great some really nice stuff there yeah I but really like you that. say really nice stuff well executed things nothing particularly we've not seen before no, so I would well, say it's, it's only not a certain amount of theatre hydraulic do hydraulicry I guess yeah but I mean it, it put but me it in mind of, if anybody's saw the barn sequence in Andrew Lloyd Webber's Wizard of Oz at the Palladium, the gauze effect and the travelling through space and time of the barn moment was literally like that but with a DeLorean for me. Like I've seen exactly that before but it was done spectacularly then and it was done spectacularly here. Yes, it may not be something, maybe something you've seen before but I maybe still think not. it works. Yeah. yeah, absolutely and I've not seen that before so really nice stuff going on there. Interesting. So I think we need to move on. We've talked about some of the creatives. I mean I've got to give it to a director being on board for this and just having the balls to say we're going to make this happen guys like I almost feel it would it would be a one of those moments where they say it's all it's you know even if it doesn't work we're going to throw everything at it because the risk is high okay and I admire the director make it sparkle, yeah glitter. I admire the director for pulling this all together I'm looking yeah. for who the hell the director is right now <laughs> and I know we mentioned it at the beginning but I can't he bloody find him. Do some vamping. Um, should we talk about the cast? No, then? we're There's talking about the director still. On. Um, you can find the director. Yeah. The cast are busy. Doing John Rando. Stuff. They are. John Rando, really yeah. good, nice stuff going yeah. on. Some really nice choreography. The company are singers and they have to move as well. And I thought it's quite cheeky, it's quite musical. They have just musical numbers appear amongst all the action. It knows itself. To a degree, it's like, what the hell is going on? But you buy it. I bought into it, and yeah. I was like, actually, this is quite I fun. I would say, I see are, what you're doing there here. are certain things. I think if this does make it out of Manchester and get another life somewhere else, we are going to lose some numbers. I think there are times where the narrative is just so strong. I felt like someone has looked at it and gone, guys, it's a musical. We haven't had a song in at least like six pages. We need to put a number in here. And I just think at times they just don't need it. Trust your source material, trust the audience to just get on board with the characters and that was the only thing for me that was lacking a little bit the relationships and the interplay sometimes it was spectacular and sometimes I was just a bit lacking in some of the character develop development should we talk about characters let's talk about actors let's talk about characters portrayals portrayals so let's start with um, can we start with Rosanna Highland in the role of, of the role of Lorraine Baines? Why do you want to start there? Um, I love Leah Thompson in the movie. I think she is phenomenal. And um, what Rosanna does is channel Leah Thompson. At times, like if I squinted just a little bit, it was like Leah was on stage. But what Rosanna has that Leah doesn't is a magnificent singing voice. And I thought she was great. And the fact that her and the actor that plays George McFly, they have to play two characters that are completely polar opposites of one another. Yes, they do. They're great as well. Um, should we talk about him? Hugo Cole, sorry, Hugh Coles in the role of George McFly. This show is all about George McFly. He, I think yeah. they kind of make it about him. He is the part. He, You are on his side from... From the word he said, from his first word, he's brilliant. He yeah. channels that character. Yeah. He's absolutely fantastic. He is fantastic to the point where he is, he becomes scene stealing. Like there is no one else on stage at the moments where he yeah. is George McFly. In You're 1955, George McFly, he does. you are every single hand movement, every moment, every little intonation and little sort of 
little thing he has with his voice and the breathless moments are all completely perfect. And this is his professional stage debut, which is unbelievable. Break a leg in nomination for Best Supporting Actor in a Musical for Hugh Carter's George McFly. Absolutely. I was going to go there if you yep. weren't. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It was marvellous. He is, he's the reason I think people... He's the one people are going to be talking about. Yep. I think he's the one yeah. that everyone is going to love. Yes. You follow him throughout. Yep. Okay, let's move on. You, you're on his side because he's the underdog and everyone loves an underdog. Everyone loves the underdog. That's the thing. Cedric Neal in the role of Goldie Wilson. Um, he also plays Marvin Berry very briefly. But let's talk about him specifically as Goldie. I really liked his number. He gets a really fun number. He probably gets the most memorable um, new number, I think. Yes. It's the it one that you will go really away well. singing. If, yep. you, if you forget every other new song, you're not going to forget Cedric's delivery. I've got to start somewhere. And he sings it really well. Yep. He performs it really well. It's really, yep. well, really well staged and directed. A really good narrative. Although it's only small, it's yep. like, yes, that works. I loved Cedric Neal. I thought that, again, he took my attention. He drove the show. He was comic where he needs to be, tragic where he did. And there's a race undertone to it as well, which was completely, which was you know, nice. believable. Yep. And that's what I would say. Absolutely. Break a Legs nomination, Best Supporting Actor in a Musical for Cedric Neal for Goldie Wilson. Am I right in saying that he got a nomination last year? Because I know... For the view upstairs. For the view upstairs. I think we nominated everybody yeah, he didn't in make company. the shortlist, but he was nominated. So, so well for done. second year, for well second done. year running. Let's talk about Ollie Dobson in the role of Marty McFly. I thought he was the part. Like I he mean, was. Yeah, from Michael a, J. Fox. Uh, well, he was Marty McFly. Look at Marty. J. He owned the part in himself. Like he was that role. He had a fantastic pitch, and where he pitched, he's oh, freaking out. His mum coming onto him. I thought it was brilliant. Great voice as well. Yeah. Uh, and I'm pretty sure he was playing the guitar. <laughs> I don't oh, think really? he was miming the guitar, and he was fantastic when he was and doing the he, guitar. And if he was miming the guitar, then, if he was, then expert it was great. Expert miming. Expert you know. miming, but I think he was. I was looking I love very a guy who at can those finger. fingers. Love a guy. Love a guy with think. good fingers. Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, and also, let's talk about Roger Bart in the role of Doc Brown. I mean, Broadway legend. I mean, if you read his credits, they go on and 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 on, all the way back through time. What did you think of him? I thought he was. I think he's been given free reign to really have fun with this. Yes. I felt as if he was in a Mel Brooks piece. Well, he, that's what he's known for mainly. And I feel like as he's if done he's, two of those. I feel as if he's brought a lot of that comedy and interplay into this, kind of almost like trying to make his fellow actors laugh. Yeah. But in a way that he's doing it with the audience. Yeah. So when that happened at one point, I don't know if it just happened tonight or whether it's in, I guess, a bit of a spoiler all the time, but. We as an audience are with him throughout. What I loved. He's really good fun. What I loved with this this character particularly, which I didn't feel in all all of them, I felt like the direction had been watch the film, like and which was fine because imitation is a massive art. Um, but I thought that's a great skill to have, and a lot of them I thought it just felt like they were just recreating the film. What Roger Bart did in the role of Dot Brown was use that fantastic characterisation that Christopher Lloyd had in the film and use it as a scaffold to hang his coat off and to literally free himself up from it at times. He, he wasn't just, restricted it was from not it, restricted. he was liberated I from loved, a base. I loved the fact that he had that ability and I think he comes from experience as well of when, he not, when knowing not when to step away from the things that people expect and when to draw closer to them. Experience massive. I want to say Break a Leg is nomination there. Wow. 2020. Best actor in a musical. Best actor in a musical. For Roger Bart in the role of um, Doc Brown. Dr. Emmett he Brown. Was, I thought he was really good. Yeah. I really liked him. Such experience, such, such safe hands, such interplay with his fellow actors, with the piece and with us. Yep. Uh, I thought he was great. What it is by and large is a spectacle. When those moments are big, they are really, really big. You can see where every penny of your money has gone on this. The projections, for example, were just out of the world world class I'm thinking of I don't want to compare it to other shows but I'm thinking the projections in Prince of Egypt look like they were made in 1985 compared to this which feels modern which I feels the, um, technology at the front I thought the set was really nice actually they have these elements that come out into the audience with beautiful pinpoint LED LEDs. lighting which just looked really futuristic yeah. really cool um, I, I love the versatility of the set items the set pieces the as automation well. was great yeah I loved all of that yeah, stuff. So it just felt really it feels like a 2020 musical um, it feels like what 2020 musical should be the only thing I'd say is we were up on the gallery here mm -hmm. at the opera Quite house the quite close to the front and I feel as if there 
there are elements at the back of the stage that we didn't see. They kept referring to a clock or the clock, yeah. which was out of our eyesight. And we were only two or three rows back. Yeah. So I think just be wary of your sight lines, depending on where you sit. And also the um, the mix for us for the first half oh, of yeah. At One was, was quite muddy. The vocals weren't getting over the levels of the orchestra. I and being so far the away, for me. it was the, the whole thing. I thought yeah. it got better as time went on for no. me. But you, that, that, so that was a struggle. Just think about that. And this is previews, guys, those things. That, this is why this sweet. is why we have previews and out of towns to tighten it up. Tighten it up. So um, I, I could hear that it was a good sound. I could hear yeah. that people were singing well. I could hear that the band, the orchestra was fantastic. But the merge of them together, I was losing clarity of lyrics. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what you're singing, but it sounds nice. It yeah. sounds good. Yeah. But I'm losing some of that. So but, something to, that may develop. Who knows? Yeah. Let's wrap it up. We've been talking for so, a while. For Back to the Future, the musical, here at the Manchester Opera House. I bet you're wondering how many stars. We are going to give... Four! Four stars for the space! Like, it's really enjoyable, guys. I mean, there are moments where I felt that pacing was an issue, and this is in previews. There are a couple of numbers which I think are superfluous. I think when they get taken out, pacing gets tightened up, those sound level mixes get fixed. What this is going to be is a really accessible, enjoyable show. Yes. Um, accessibility comes with its own set of problems. It's going to attract people to the audience, to the theatre that don't know how to go to the theatre. And I'm calling out to you, ushers, front of house staff out there, to educate these people. Please, I don't want to have to do it all the time. Um, it's up to you. Um, I really enjoyed it. I, we were having a discussion earlier about do you have to know the piece or not. I think if you love the film, then definitely come and see it. I'm not sure what someone's experience would be yeah. if they hadn't seen it. What this has is a huge amount of nostalgia for people. I, and I think harping, that's what really And works. again, I think it's perfect for Brexit Britain because it's harping back to a time that people consider oh, was, here we go. was better. Soapbox, you let's know. move on. But I do feel like they will come here to be reminded of a time where things weren't like they are now. Anyway, that's just what Lego Simon that's thinks. what I think. And totally just what I that's think. It's just what he thinks. Come and see it for yourself. And let us know what you think. Comment let us down know. below. Down below. Like, dislike, yeah. do something, don't be nothing. Subscribe. We're the Breaker Legos. And we'll catch you again soon. Bye. Look at who we have got. Isn't this it's amazing? Me. It's only so Ollie. It's the wonderful Oliver Ormson, who we last saw in Cats at Kilworth House. Oh. Um, You've been busy saw... for you. You've been busy I've been recently. very busy this year, actually. Like, it's... As actors, sometimes we go like this, peaks and troughs. But yeah, 2019 was pretty busy. You've had a great year. Mm. And now you are in Back to, to the, the Future, the musical, musical yeah. which is a world premiere here in Manchester. Very lucky. Surely, like, when you're telling the grandkids where you've been, this is going to be one of the highlights, yeah. right? Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm, as soon as it got offered to me, I was like, I have to do that. Regardless, I could be like the tree at the back or, you know, wherever. <laughs> I was like, I have to be a part of this show because it means so much to so many people. And you've been with the show for quite a while. 2018. Yeah. What's your journey been like? Right. Talk journey. us through Who's this ready journey. For this journey? Okay. We're ready. We're Sit ready. Down. Get yourselves Get in. a cup of tea. Yeah. Just Fast pause no it. <laughs> okay, right, here okay. we go. So 2018, I auditioned uh, for the workshop. Just a generic audition, and I got asked to be part of it, just ensemble. And I think they were thinking, like, cover Biff, maybe. So that was 2018 in August. And we did a three-week three week workshop in the Dominion upstairs. And then after we finished that, we well, we invited loads of like producers and stuff. And they were like, yeah, this could work. And it was like the bare bones of what we have now. Mm -hmm. Then in November 2018, I did another workshop with more music. We had like more music, more songs. Like the ideas they had in August afterwards, like from the feedback, they were like, we need this song to be better or that song needs to change. Then I did another workshop, January 2019. Um, and that was again another three week workshop and we did a performance at the end so every time it was getting better and better and better and then 2000, uh, yeah, 2019 in the summer when I was doing Cats there was another workshop and I auditioned for it Yeah. and well it was like they said to me you have to come in because before that time there was no choreographer on the project and they're like you have to come in and dance for the, the choreographer and this was like April this is just before Cats but I was like I can't do the summer workshop because I'm doing Cats at Kerworth. Sure. and they were like well, I'll just come in and dance and see what happens. And I came and danced, and that was it. I didn't hear anything. So I thought, I've done, I've, I've fudged okay, it up. It's not so going to go I've done, I've done three workshops to be a part of this, and that's it. Great. Like, and I didn't hear any. So that was April. August in Kilworth, I get a call this from my looking. agent. Like, this, this is great. Right? Like, I want to know what happens next. Journey. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in Kilworth, my agent calls. I'm dressed as a cat <laughs> in Kilworth. Full face makeup. Yeah, and like, whiskers and all. They're like, yeah, so uh, Back to the Future just called. I was like, 
Yes, because in my mind, I'm like, I feel like I've done enough to be a part of this January show in Manchester. Yeah. Um, and they're like, they want you to do, they want you to be a part of it. Are you free? And I was like, yes, I'm free. I want to do it. Of course I am. Yeah, I will so clear my diary That was a journey. That. And they were like, yeah, we want you to be uh, first co- ensemble, uh, first cover biff. And that's I was like, amazing. I don't care. I, I'm in it. Like, I'm in it. So that's it. And then we're here now. How difficult is it to keep Crazy. that to yourself, though? Because, you know, you've gone through that whole process. And yeah. surely you just want to scream like, oh, my gosh, I'm doing Back to the Future workshops. I've just been yeah. offered the job and you've got to keep it yeah. in. Yeah, it was really hard. And there was such a weird, because I, I, I went through the breakup with it. It sounds really stupid, but I, people will know. Like, it's like anything. Like, you get excited for something. You're like, oh, it's going to happen. I'm going to get that job. And then it doesn't happen. Yeah. Especially when you do, like, three workshops. You feel like, and you know, no one's ever obliged to be a part of a job. Or not, you shouldn't ever feel like, I, I deserve something. But I did sort of feel that. You worked like, hard, Yeah, right? I was like, you know, because the best thing about being in workshops, and when you see the show tonight, uh, you'll notice, well, not notice, but there are things in the show that are from me, mm. which is the best thing in the you world. You get creative so, input, yeah, and like, that's the it's dream. A, it's amazing. So when when I felt like I missed the boat, and I was actually doing Cats, which was great, but when they called and said, yeah, we actually want you to be a part of the, you know, the January show, I was like, I'm in. Yeah. Amazing. And that's the most rewarding thing, isn't it? Because there's a lot of shows out there, you probably know, that have been going on for years and years mm. and years. And, you, you know, you stand where you stand. The yes. track that's is where laid. It's yes. originally laid. Yes. That's where the yeah, lighting so plot is. And that's how it is. So to be part of something that's really and originating yeah. original. Yeah, it's, and it's I think crazy. workshops are something that's quite... I don't know, it may just be me, but it feels quite new to the UK. They've been happening in yeah. the US for a long time. Any show yeah. in the gets US workshopped gets workshops, but that hasn't always been the case over here. Yeah. But that seems to be happening more and more often. Yeah, and it is the correct thing to do. Like, I, any new show, I, like any good new show would probably have gone through three or four workshops. It's just, such a like, risk just putting it yeah, out there. Yeah, it has to. It has to. Because I, I think back to what Back to Future was in 2018 to what it is now. It's like completely different. It's everything's so much better and more detailed, and the script's like cleaner and just it's more it's streamlined as well because it has to be for a musical. You can't just have these massive scenes where because it the script was lifted pretty much from the first movie, mm-hmm. um, so you can't have those. You know, certain things don't work. You know, they do work on screen, but they don't work on stage. Mm-hmm. So naturally, there have to be changes there. And I feel like we're getting there every day. Amazing. Yeah. And how have previews been? Because you're still in previews right now. Yeah. Right? So we tonight was. Uh, Show ten of the the preview ten and it's been a make like it's been ridiculous. I can't tell you like how crazy it is, guys. It's crazy. <laughs> it so, sounds as if it's go- it's crazy. The first night, I can't t- like people like would say a line like George McFly, a guy who plays uh, Hugh plays George McFly. He would say like now now Biff like his first line. And he's like Wah! like for about thirty seconds and wow. every because it's a line yeah, that everybody knows. It's every, iconic. Every main character, their first line, there was like a thirty second cheer That's afterwards. That's crazy. You must have felt like a rock god. Yeah, it was yeah, we did. It yeah. was like a rock god. I don't think I'll ever experience anything. I said to my mum about this. I'm talking a lot, but I said to my mum. <laughs> no, that's the point. That's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I said to my mum about this. I said the only way I'll ever like get close to that first night if is if they do Star Wars the musical wow. and I'm a part you know like when someone's it's got a such cult a following yeah, it's, it's ridiculous yeah well, it's so, my favourite film, so, yeah. you know, that's... No pressure. Specific. No yeah, pressure. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't write it, it's all right. I guess it's worth saying we are recording this interview before we've seen the show, oh, so yeah. no pressure, Ollie. But how much has changed during previews? Because that's what previews are for, yeah. to kind yes. of assess the show in front of a live mm. audience. Get that reaction. And it's kind it's of tweak when necessary. Yeah. So what's been going on through it's, the so previews? So the first preview came down at um, 20, no, yeah, 20 to 11. Wow. That's yes. a long show. Longer than Les Mis. <laughs> Settle and I, in, guys. And I said we can't, like, we can't be the new Les Mis. Yeah. You know. Um. So, but now we're coming down at quarter past ten, which is still pretty long. Yeah. That's half an but, hour. But we that's are. A lot. We, we are, So that's how much has changed in ten shows. We are losing okay. so much time because we're, we're bringing stuff back, and it'll ever change. Um. There's a, there's two main car se- uh, sequences. One when he goes uh, to 1955, and obviously when he comes back to 1985, they've changed quite a bit. They've been trimmed down so that's okay. the, the main thing how too. intensive is that on you as a cast member and as a cast going yeah. through those changes now uh, it's in 10 shows I guess we're it's, in, it's intense and it's um, we are very looked after and, and they know how much you know it's, the stress is real like they were, last night we did new choreography for Back in Time for the wow. first time they were like we learnt it in like 15 minutes <laughs> and they're like you're on you're doing it tonight let's just do it it's previews just see if it works that's crazy and all of us the, like because it's like the bows Back in Time spoiler yeah um, the curtain comes up for the bows you'll see it tonight yeah and all the ensemble are like dancing and we're like 
before the curtain came up, we're like, good luck, guys. Okay, good what luck. are you going like, to do? Like, How is this going to end yeah, up? Yeah, luckily I'm at the back me. for that bit. So I was like, if you're, if the front row's right, I'll be right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, so. With a, with a show about time travel, it's going to base the question, you're going to get asked this a lot, right? If you had your own oh, DeLorean, shoot. where are you going to travel to and why? You could go anywhere in time. I'd have to go forward. Okay. I, 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 yeah, I feel like time. going back okay. just wouldn't, I don't know, I'd, I'd, Want to see where you already we are. know about yeah. that. Like, you can read a history can, book yeah. for that. That's a good point. Would you rewrite history? Would you go back and speak to yourself? Or would you go into the future and see yourself in the future? Future, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Future. Yeah. It's a curiosity, right? Yeah. yeah, I think so. It has to be forward. I don't know when, though. Maybe if I went back, I'd say to myself as an 18 year old boy, don't drink that pint of beer. Because I <laughs> no, I'll probably drink less now. <laughs> don't um, get into that scrape. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Yeah, just think juice. Yeah. Um, and that brings us neatly on to we want to have a bit of fun and games with you here. Fun and oh, games, oh, Leggers, fun and games. With, with us, a, a quiz. A we quiz. are going to play a quiz that I may have invented in the car on the way down here called Back to the Ormson. Insert musical Oh my god. So, okay. We've looked back like on quizzes. a few of your theatre credits okay. and we've picked up a few key roles that you've played throughout your career. Uh, and yeah. we want to challenge you on those now about how well you remember them or Not what you might know about that time in history. Oh, so oh, wow. Jeez. Question, right, you, you'll be surprised to know. There's only five, five questions, questions, but, a but potential there's of 27 20. points up for grabs, <laughs> right, in five questions. That's even worse. All will become 27 clear. 27 points become clear. Wasn't, maths wasn't my strong point. Anyway, okay. question number one. Back in 2017, you played the role of Lunas, Lucas Beinecke yes. in Adam's Family the Musical. Yes. But which of these UK cities did the tour not visit? Oh, I get this. Do, do, do. So, did you not go to Nottingham? Sheffield or Birmingham? We went to all of them. <laughs> Did you? <Yeah. laughs> Not according to our research. According to our research, you never went to Sheffield. We did. Did you? Did you? Well, I see him. Well, that kills well, that that's, question. Do you know what? Have a point for knowing better than Actually, the, I can the get website. 28 points. <laughs> the website. No, yeah, we went to Lyceum. I remember it. Is the Lyceum? In yeah, is, is it next to the Crucible? The kind of yeah, and, it's yeah. Nice. and there's a bar. Well, so according, to the, according, to the, according to the website, which is now, what, four years old or whatever, you yeah, didn't go there, but you must have gone there. Yeah. Interesting. Sorry about that. Well, this is really interesting to know what's going to happen for the I next know. four well, questions. Well, if any other family people might have seen it in Sheffield. <laughs> yeah, let us know. Question number Comment two. Below. In yes. 2019, you took on the part of Rum Tum Tugger in the Kilworth House yes. production of Cats. Now, this is where things get really interesting. In the song, Jellical Songs for Jellical Cats, we hear a list of 22 pussy personality types. First oh is Practical Cats. <laughs> but how many of the remaining 21 types can you name? You get a point for each. There's no Practical Cats, Dramatical Cats, Critical Cats. I, I don't know. I can't do it anymore. Go Fanatical. on. Fanatical Cats. Practical Cats. Is Dramatical in that second? Dramatical Cats. Oh, I, I don't know this. On the list. Pragmatical Cats. Were you in that number? <laughs> I was at the back. <laughs> I was at the back. I know, like, it was Just Fanatical. Practical. Yes, yeah. they're the first two. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I know, hysterical is in there. Yeah. Yes. Clerical. Clerical, yes. yes. There's one I can never pronounce, like allegorical. Allegorical yes. cats is in yeah, there. Yeah, well. It's yeah, like an allegorical. Um, uh, clinical? <laughs> Clinical, Clinical, I don't think is on, on there. there. Well, I don't know. Are we going to put a time limit on this? Yes. I there know. are I don't a know. whole load I've of them. I've got five there. And you know what? It's five. funny that once you're out of a show, you, that's it. It goes oh, into the recycle it's so bin. True. Honestly, Your mind was, is on like, Back to the Future. We five points. Five points. What five were you talking about there. the other day with regards to forgetting where you've been and what you've Yeah, we were just in the dressing room, we were talking about like how, I think it was about Hairspray, I don't know if you have any questions on hairspray. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Oh, God. <laughs> so bad. I don't, I can't, it's like a different person played that role. I can't remember it. That's gone. Crazy. Weird. You know, we're given the lines as an actor for now. Yeah. That's it. That's Even like know. High Fidelity, like, which is the job I did before this. Yeah. I, I, I would I need another three weeks. <laughs> <person. laughs> Question okay. three. In 2015, you joined the cast of West End production of Book of Mormon, yeah. a show which shares the history of that religion through the number All American Prophet. We are told that the Prophet Joe. Joseph Smith discovered the Mormon golden place underneath a tree in the backyard, but in which year did this discovery take place? 
I'm going to say it without singing. Yeah. 1823. Yes! Because yes! I've covered that part. Yeah. Did yeah. you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I covered both of them. So I covered Elder Price and Joseph Smith. So I did both awesome. like conversations. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. If you hadn't got that, we'd have been disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> Question number four. All the way back in 2012, you played the heart throbbing Larkin in Aberystwyth Art Centre's this production of Hairspray. Yeah. But can you tell us who first played the role on Broadway in the West End and in the 2007 movie and you get a point for each. Right, so Zac Efron. Yes, he was in the movie, 2007. What's the guy from Glee called? Matt? No. Is it, it is Matt something. Go on. I want to know how good your research oh. techniques are here. Matt Glee, man. Yeah, <laughs> What's his name? Exactly. Matt it begins Matt. with an M. Matt McKenna. No, Matt no. McKenna. Matt. I don't know why you're looking at me. I it's don't know. Curly hair. Yeah. Megan Simon does the research. She knows all the answers. <sighs> It's Morris. Matt Morrison. Matt Morrison. Matt Morrison. And in the, in the original West original, End production. What year was this? Got 2009, so maybe? Before the, the, maybe earlier than that, but yeah, pretty. What does it begin with, his name? His first name's Ben. Ben. Adams. He's from A1. That's hilarious. I don't know. Ben, ben James I... Ellis. Oh. So one out of three. That's that pretty good. One and a half. One and a half. half. We'll, we'll, get you, we'll give you the mat. We'll yeah. give you the mat. And last, but by no means least, currently. Another tricky one. You're appearing oh in the you world. You're sweating. <laughs> yeah, just sweat. <laughs> it's all fun and games for you in the leggers until we come look, up with look the Look at this, like, this is like body language. It's like... <laughs> Currently, you're appearing in the world premiere of Back to the Future, the musical at the Manchester Opera House, which is based on the 1985 movie, but which one of the following musical movies was released in that year? Okay, 1985. Was it a chorus line, The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, or Little Shop of Horrors? What also came out in that year? As a movie. It's got to be Little Shop of Horrors. Has it? Oh, final is answer. that your final Don't answer? Don't say that. I can't this be a chorus line. This is when the line. lights will come down. A chorus line. Oh, oh, it's... It's a chorus is line. It? It is. is that I your can... final answer? No, yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, there we go. You can have that. I played so. Paul in a chorus line in my... In, in, did you? Yes, I did. In, in like, college. But, yeah. Awesome. Loved it. That's awesome. an amazing show. The movie of that came out in 1985. Mm -hmm. Directed by Richard Attenborough. What, you love that movie. I do. You've got issues with that I film. Have. I have a lot of it issues. Was, the, yeah, the, the film movie. was one of those early musicals that I was introduced to. I, I think it was on late at yeah. night. And I just started watching it. And I was like, I what is this? I feel like you this? knew no better. Is that why you probably mm. I Possibly, I need no The better. stage show. I've ahead never seen the stage yeah. show, but so, it's great. how many points did you get <laughs> out of 27? 27. I want to say it's right. around the 10 mark, but I'll have to add it up later. Six. No, I'm going to do it now. Oh my gosh. Okay. Seven, Five. And a half. I think someone else could have answered that. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. That is, that is, that is, we don't have a that prize. That is a third right. All no. you get is respect. You get a lot of, Leg of, a respect. Lot of love and respect. Uh, and thank you for engaging in uh, our game. So if people come to see Back to Fish and Musical, you have to sum it up in three words, what can they expect? Uh, it's big, it's magical, and it... Rocks. It rocks. Big magical rocks. What more could you ask yeah. for? Thank you to the Thank you, lovely Ollie. Oliver Orbison. Thanks. Thanks you are me, a guys. dream. Right. Um, we can't wait to see the show tonight. Enjoy it. Thank you. Bye. See you later, people. Bye. Bye.